Luke. This is Luke, and I'm Lori, and this is little tiny Leon, and we're coming at you from the La Hakai. I know that we've disappeared for a really long time now, so we wanted to take a moment to touch base with you, let you know exactly what happened, and also answer a lot of their frequently asked questions that we have in the comments of our videos. So stick with us, a lot, a lot of stuff to tell you. So let's go outside and sit down. All right, here we are. I'm in the workshop right now, and I got my notes and hair down because we are giving it to you straight today. Uh, we did take about a month and a half hiatus from videos, and there's several reasons, but a lot of it, mental health. We did get extremely burnt out. Uh, we are here, if you've been following our project, in this company, and they approached us in order to do our interior to showcase all of their amazing work that they do. But unfortunately, they were not able to honor their original commitment they made to us. Due to internal issues unrelated to our project, they had to step back and not commit any more labor. They are able to continue helping us with knowledge, advice. We have full access to the warehouse still and they're also going to do the painting process and sealing all the wood and we're like i said we're going to be in touch with all the carpenters here giving us advice but that means we have taken the full responsibility now of the interior when we started this project had always known that we were going to do the interior and that was the most exciting part we were very very much looking forward to doing the interior because we are designers and so Creating an interior was a big part of this project. In fact, we were looking for a boat that kind of had mostly the, the exterior, the hull, and all the, the rigging, everything uh, almost ready to go and really a fairly bad interior so we could rip it out and redo the layouts. As you know, that is not what happened. For those of you who don't know, we found this boat in Brazil and it is a 30-foot steel sailboat it is a custom-made one as well that sailed from france to brazil and was remaining neglected here in the water for a really long time when we picked it up unfortunately we were the under the impression that it had been taken care of there was the owner who had done a really nice paint job on it only about two years prior and did a lot of maintenance and stuff there were some defects obviously that we thought we could handle but once we got it on land, it was really obvious that we had big, big problems to deal with. It was too late. We were in a club, not even in a shipyard. We weren't able to move the boat. We weren't able to figure out how long it would take us to actually fix all the problems. And we didn't know where to go from there. So we just put our nose to the grindstone and we started working as hard as we can to fix it. All the problems as fast as we can. And as you know, we pretty much created a brand new boat in the end. We then sailed our boat all the way to here to Navaganches, which is three states south of where we originally purchased it, where there is a much larger and stronger workforce for boat building. And this is where we have continued our project. Then we were asked by this company to bring the boat here. So as you know, we have moved this boat on land probably way more than we have in the water. And that is because we were asked to bring it here. So it had better access to these facilities, these great facilities, obviously. So it was totally worth it. And, and then we did believe at that time they were able to commit enough time to dedicate to to completing the interior within a couple of months unfortunately during that time really during each week only a handful of hours was able to be committed and therefore our project that we thought was going to be two months ended up taking a lot longer at to what point we have decided to to step in and they are not able to contribute more labor in that and that is why you've seen in the last few videos that we had a while ago us really stepping in and doing a lot of the, the the building and the work but like i said this is something that we were not 
opposed to this was actually a blessing we we had a really great time building the head in our boat we had a really amazing time understanding and learning from all of these carpenters and this is one of the things that we wanted to do originally the thing is is we are amateurs so it does take us longer than a professional longer than them and on top of that it's not just uh, building, we're doing all the decision making, the purchasing, the construction, the, the managing of time. And during this time, we've also taken a pause every now and then to do a little odd job so we can continue funding this project. So basically during this time, we started to work around 10 hours a day after they were no longer able to commit to, to building the boat uh, as we had originally agreed. We were also editing video, which takes around 30 hours a week. On top of that, we also maintain social media. So after a while, we just got really burnt out. And we started getting sick, and we started getting tired, and we started not being able to show up for, for everything ourselves. First we stopped on social media and then we weren't able to do any videos on YouTube and then we started to slow down on the construction as well until a point where we just had to rest. So that's what we've been doing for the last, I think, month and a half. We've been continuing our work on the boat even though it's much slower than we had originally planned. So that brings me back to all of these questions here, I've got them noted down on this cardboard, uh, referring back to what I just said, but also to those questions that you've had. So I wanna answer some of these things and let you know what we're doing now. All right, let's get to it. All right, so here we go. These are the top five questions that we've received um, on our comments. First one is, where is our project? Where are we in the world? Where are we doing this build? And as I said before, we are currently in Brazil. Now, we did our construction in Brazil because we were living here at the time. And this is where we purchased our boat. And that might have been on the table as one of the, the most important lessons that we've learned to date is location. The benefits of building in Brazil is clearly the hourly rate or the day rate for workers and labor. Let's say you're paying $50, $75 an hour for somebody in the United States, like a welder, you're going to end up being paying for maybe $50 a day, so like eight hours a day for a top level welder here. So a lot of you guys ask like, how can we afford this work, how can we afford this help? The thing is, is that day rates and workers is significantly cheaper. It makes it affordable, but there's also some backdrops like anything like electronic that's going to be imported into Brazil. That is, that becomes a big complication. There is a limited amount of options for things from Brazil and anything that's imported can be hit with a pretty heavy importation, importation tax on top of that of a sales tax. We're talking a tax up to 60% of the value and 60% of the shipping costs as well that you pay out of pocket. And possibly on top of that, another, let's say depending like 17 to 90% sales tax on top of that. So an item like an electronic from Apple could be up to three times the value. It is the most expensive place to buy, for instance, Apple products in the entire world. So there is some great advantages and there's some disadvantages. Now, we brought in a lot of stuff that we already owned from say the States where it is much cheaper to buy things. So we're trying to be able to balance some of these pluses and minuses, but there are limitations to certain things that we can bring in and that takes time for us to find what's the best alternate option and how can we make that work. So. A lot of people chime in and they say, well, why don't you just do this, why don't you do this? There's sometimes it doesn't even exist here. And, and we've been really fortunate that as the years gone by here in Brazil, there are more options of things available and there's more things being created in Brazil as well. So it's getting better, but it's a slow process. There are a lot of pluses and minuses to a build in 
a country like in South America, like Brazil. And so our biggest lesson, like we said, was choose your location wisely, know who you're gonna work with and do a lot of research do a lot, a lot of research. And we were here at the time and we did tons of research and there were still things that we weren't expecting. So expect the unexpected as well. All right, next question. All right, question number two. We're actually gonna condense this into two questions in one, which is why we bought a steel boat and also why we did not decide on a diesel engine. We chose steel specifically because that is a material that we are familiar with and that we know we can fix quite easily. Also, it was very easy to modify and make kind of customizations to it. We also know that whenever we travel around the world, steel will be a very affordable and easy material to be able to fix and do repairs. Anyone in the world can pretty much fix a steel boat so that was really important for us for security also because it is strong now all boats have their issues fiberglass has osmosis aluminum has electrolysis and steel has rust but we picked our poison as and rust is something that we know we can tackle we did a lot of work on making the hull sealed and we sandblasted it and painted it and with the right kind of maintenance this kind of material can last a really really long time in a very good condition so we also decided that we wanted the kind of security that steel can bring us since we decided to travel in a boat for a long distance it's not that we're going to be just hanging out coastally we want to be able to go places and know that we're going to be safe. We even want to go to places that are cold regions where there's ice and not be afraid that one little bump could put our entire home underwater. This is our home. This is not just like a sailboat that we're racing around. This is something that's going to contain all our lives. So it has to be safe. It has to be secure. And yes, mom, I've received all of your emails about orcas sinking boats. So <laughs> we hope that we won't have those kind of major issues with a steel sailboat. Now that ties into Diesel, why we chose a diesel engine was mainly because a steel sailboat is much easier and simpler for us to be able to modify it to receive our electric engine. Now, we specifically chose to have an electric engine because we want to be off-grid, fully off-grid. So the only thing that we have to do is plan how much food we need and we can actually gauge how much time we can be away and traveling off of any kind of assistance from land. Now with diesel, you don't know. You gotta gas up, you gotta gas up and stop. So that we wanted to really have an electric engine in order to eliminate our dependency on coming in and needing to get resources from land. Uh, things like internet, you can get it in the water. Things like water, we're gonna have a water maker and things like electrical, we were gonna have solar power. Now, I'm not going to get into the technical things about our solar and our electrical setup right now because we're going to be doing a whole installation so we can together be looking at that installation and dissecting that and talking about that in the future. And if you guys have any recommendations, you let us know. We are always, always listening and reading and a lot of the comments that you guys have made in the past have changed our entire project and made us for the better. So keep keep writing, keep letting us know, and we're listening. So that is why we chose our steel sailboat. Uh, also a little note, uh, there's a bunch of people that said it is too small. <laughs> and so I was kind of a digression, but we specifically chose a 34 foot boat because smaller is cheaper. When everything is bigger, you need more material, you need more expensive material, you need more stuff. So it was important for us to find a boat that is small enough that we feel comfortable living in it, but large enough that we don't feel claustrophobic. And our design challenge that we're trying to tackle right now with the interior is how to make a 34-foot boat 
feel like a 40 foot. So let's see if we can do it. And that, that's the reason why we chose this smaller boat is really to be able to be doing a project this complex. And in the future, it would be awesome to have a larger boat, but let's see. Let's see if we can actually make this one feel like it's satisfying all our needs for the two of us. So next question. <laughs> All right, so if you're still with me here, awesome. The next question that you had was you wanted to know, when are we gonna finish this project? And actually, I'd like to know that as well. <laughs> well, I think this is the one question that boat builders hate to hear, and they hear it a lot. It's one of those things where you plan and you plan and you plan, and probably pretty much any kind of construction, like if you have construction in your house, and you, you make all the well-set plans, you say everything that it's gonna do and how the timeline is gonna be and everything, and then everything blows up. So we have made a million different plans and made a diff different dates on different occasions about when we're gonna finish this boat. And let me tell you, it's best not to. <laughs> it's best to just, let's say, tackle each problem as it comes, tackle each segment of the project as it comes, and time is money in the end. The longer a project goes on, the longer we have different kinds of expenses and stuff, so finishing our, our project and finishing the boat sooner than later is better for all of us. But as we said, this, this last month and a half, we put our eyes on the prize and we wanted to finish so bad and we wanted to just like complete a lot of things and make up for a lot of lost time and in the end it, it bit us in the butt we ended up tired we, if we had just kind of regulated our time each each day and taken it easy it probably would have had the same results in the end and then we would have felt better because we stayed healthy and stayed uh, clear of mind so at this point in time, we are <laughs> unsure about when this project is going to end, but we are working towards early next year. <laughs> Don't quote me on anything, but we really, really are working hard here in order to make this happen. We really appreciate your support and all of your kind words that you guys have been giving us week in and week out just helping us keep our eyes on the prize, helping us keep the, our own dream alive. So we don't know yet, um, and once we do have an idea, you'll be the first to know. <laughs> All right, so that brings me to a really tough question that we get a lot, and that is, do we regret buying this boat? This is a tough one because we've actually been talking about this for a little while now because we knew we wanted to do these question and answers and we just didn't know, I guess, how we felt or how to answer this. And in the end, there really is no reason or use looking back and saying, well, I wish I didn't do this. I wish I didn't. I think there's a lot of things that we learned along the way. And if we had knowledge about certain things along the way, 100% we would have made different decisions. But the only way that we learned those things were to pass through those problems. So I'm not even sure. I mean, in that moment, we didn't know. So we couldn't. We didn't know about locations in Brazil at the time, the best locations for building things, or the best people, or the best contacts, or the best things to buy. Like, we just didn't know. So passing through all this is what taught us how to have the knowledge to do better, and I'm not sure there was any other way. Now we feel kind of like experts. I mean, we're not that, but we feel so much more capable now and like I said, it doesn't seem really productive to say we regret buying this boat. We value so much all the stuff that we learned. We feel empowered and wiser and more capable of taking on a lot of things that seem overwhelming or daunting. So I would say no, 
we should live our lives without the regrets. We should just look at our mistakes as things that were lessons that we learned along the way. And take everything with a grain of salt and keep moving forward. Eyes on the horizon, right? <laughs> All right, and last question. Where are we gonna go when we splash? Now, we tackled this a couple of times before, giving a little ideas of what we thought we were going to do once we get the boat in the water. Obviously, the idea is to travel, but travel where? So we've broken it down into three stages. So first off is, since this boat is completely built from scratch, we're gonna need to do some testing to make sure that all of the systems inside and obviously the structure and everything is secure and safe for us to journey far. And that means we're gonna have to stick around the general area here, making sure that we have access to any places that we need to do repairs or upgrades or anything upon our systems and everything. So we will probably stay in the region of, of this area in Brazil for a little bit. We'd love to take you along too because there are some beautiful and amazing places to travel here that we'd love you to see. And during that time, we're gonna be doing testings of our systems and giving you updates on did it work the way we wanted to or did it not? And after that will be stage two. Stage two, we really wanted to expand our travels and start going up the coast of Brazil and bringing you to all of these great places as well, heading north. Now, once we get up north, we did want to go somewhere warmer, somewhere where we could take a deep breath after all of this construction, years and years of stress, destruction, and a lot of concentration. We wanted to be able to breathe some warm, warm air and really enjoy ourselves. And again, take you along for the ride with us. And then from there, stage three is we don't know yet. We do not know what our next step is. Will we start traveling aggressively around the world? Will there be certain stops that we wanna make specifically? Do we wanna visit you guys somewhere and have like a little get together point? So that is gonna be left in the future, but we hope that you participate in helping, make, uh, uh, helping us make that decision. So you can chime in and let us know when that moment comes, but first, Let's get this boat in the water. <laughs> Wherever we go in the world, we want to take you guys with us. And to make that possible, we want to give a big thanks to our Patreons. So even during this time when we haven't been able to make these large involved videos on YouTube, our Patreons have been there with us, supporting us along the way. And we are so, so thankful for that. And in our Patreon, uh, page. I'm not sure if you're familiar with it or not. It's a page that we can, that people go in order to support a project. They make a small con contribution and we provide you things like exclusive access and information to our project. More raw details, really just more vlogging like this so that you know what's going on, how is it happening, how are we progressing, and also it's a great place where you can give us commentary and really let us know what your opinion is on how to do certain projects like we reach out to our patreons all the time and ask their opinions on things and we're always touching base with them because it is is really something that means a lot to us a nice little community here so if you want to be part of our project help us support making these videos help us support getting out there and making this adventure so we can bring you along and we can actually travel the world and explore it together go to our page our patreon page and we really look forward to seeing you in the future remember subscribe to our page and ring that bell because we might be a little inconsistent with our video posts over the next let's say month or so hopefully we can get back to a rhythm of every Sunday but if you do miss a video um, just hit that bell and YouTube will notify you when we do posts. So thanks so much for your patience. Thanks so much for your love and support. And we hope to see you in the water sooner than later. <laughs>